see, there is, in Australia, as in the UK, there is a massive skills gap. Uh, over the last 20, 30, 40 years, we've not seen children or the next generation come into industry. Everybody wants to go into services, they want to be dot uh, com billionaires or invent the next app or basically be in, be in the tech or services industry. Whereas I remember when I grew up as a child, I wanted to be an engineer, I, wanted, I was fascinated by the physical world. So we have a program called the Industri Industrial Cadets Program in the UK, which uh, that, that program was actually founded by the Prince of Wales. And it focuses on bringing children from a very early age, kindergarten onwards, into industry. So we take what we do is, uh, in all our plants, we have 50 odd plants in the UK. In the local schools, uh, we uh, enroll a certain number of children from each school, bring them into our plants, show them around, give them some little basic, very basic training, but mainly about inspiring them to know more about industry. And then we grade them, and then we have uh, competition, there's winners, and then the Prince of Wales himself comes and gives uh, awards to the children. So it's sort of, again, trying to enthuse them, trying to make them more interested in, uh, in industry. And it's working really well. We have a target of reaching 5,000 kids uh, this year, so it's, it's, you know, it's, it's uh, very fulfilling. It's, it's a great initiative, and the concept, as I said, is, is about uh, educating or inspiring the next generation to come into our industry and to help fulfill this skills gap, which is going to be a growing problem. We have an aging population in all our plants, and we don't have enough young people coming into the business. And this is sort of trying to address that. It's a longer-term solution because you know it's going to be talking about new kids. But I'm very passionate about doing that. I, you know, I might take my kids everywhere to every plant, every inauguration. So my my eldest has got the responsibility of being the flag raiser. Uh, so you know, it's all about just basically doing. It. Because when I was a child, I remember running around my dad's plants and getting inspired by that, and that's what led me to to where I am today. In steel, I mean, Australia itself is growing uh, rapidly. Uh, uh, we see, uh, you know, another 10, 15 percent uh, for sure in the market uh, over the next few years. After that, is, predictions are that will plateau out. In my own view, will continue to grow. But so Australia has a strong market for now for, for the next five years for sure. There's no question about it. But overall, on a macro sense, India is a big sleeping giant, and it's waking up. And as it does, it'll consume huge amount of steel. India is consuming 70, 80 million tons today, whereas if you look at China, it's 10 times that. And India has the same population, actually arguably a larger population than China today. So the, the potential demand of steel in India is enormous, and we feel that will come start coming through. And we feel that India will grow at a pace eventually when it hits that soft spot, you know, the, the, uh, when it hits uh, its S-curve, it will, it will uh, need more steel than it can generate it by itself, and it will be a great uh, market for steel which is why we want to make India part of our focus. But we will make steel in market. I believe strongly that steel should be made in market, close to the customer. But we'll make the semis here. So instead of exporting iron ore and coal, we'll export semis like billets and slabs, and then roll them in India, finish them in India, and, and serve the customers domestically. That's part of the strategy. So renewables uh, is the next generation. There's Nobody argues with that. It's a question of how we transition, and what mechanisms we can come up with to balance uh, things like the solar and wind which only work when the sun is shining or the wind is blowing. So we have a variety of uh, mechanisms in our mix. In the UK we have done, uh, uh, obviously we have hydropower, but also we have done a lot of waste energy, uh, a lot of uh, biomass, biofuel and so on. In Australia specifically we have a great opportunity in pumped hydro. So a lot of the mine pits uh, around the country, including our own mine pits, uh, are great opportunities for being large reservoirs where we can pump water and store water when energy prices are low. And then when energy prices are high, you run the water down, run turbines, generate electricity to, to balance, the, balance the power demand. So that, that model works really well here because you have a lot of opportunity in all the mine pits around the country. Uh, so we're going to take advantage of that. Yes, so we already announced, we announced yesterday uh, one gigawatt overall package of uh, renewable energy. Within that, uh, the core part is the pumped hydro. And we will do more, one project's already been signed off and uh, identified, but we'll do more as time progresses in that area.